Well, on to our top story today. And the Israeli war cabinet has decided that there will be a military response to the Iranian attack over the weekend. Iran fired more than 330 missiles and drones at Israel, but almost all of them were intercepted. This has led to international leaders calling for a de-escalation of tensions in the region, including Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron. Here's what the head of the UN had to say during a meeting over the weekend with the Security Council. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting a real danger of a devastating full-scale conflict. Now is the time to defuse and de-escalate. Now is the time for maximum restraint. Well, joining us now is security expert from the University of Buckingham, uh, Professor Anthony Gleese. Good morning, Anthony. And uh, was this a good warning? Morning. Good morning. Do you think this was a warning shot for uh, from Iran to Israel, or do you think we're going to see further attacks? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Well, I, I, I honestly think when the Secretary General of the United Nations say we're on the brink of a much wider war in the Middle East, that has to be taken very seriously. When our mm -hmm. Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron tells the Israelis Iran has not only lost once, it has lost twice. He's also trying to tell the Israelis something. The Israelis, however, say they are going to retaliate. So we're in a situation of not just a tit-for-tat fight, first of all, between Iran, it, its, its surrogates, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, they've been doing this for, for months now, but most recently, of course, Iran itself. So it's not just tit for tat, it's an escalating tit for tat. And the Israelis have made it clear that the um, 300 drone cruise missile attack, luckily thwarted, thwarted by the United States of America and the UK and mm -hmm. France, not just by the Israelis, that that is not the last word on the subject and they're not going to let Iran feel that they've got one over Israel. So escalating tit for tats, more and more people being brought in and many people will be saying, I think in Israel, in, in that war cabinet, uh, that escalation means another Israeli attack on Iran, maybe it's nuclear facilities, uh, launch sites for the drones, whatever, and that spells disaster. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you so much indeed for coming on. Can I just look at it from the point of view of Benjamin Netanyahu here? Um, in the recent... Um, well, in recent weeks, certainly in the last couple of weeks, there seems to have been uh, some criticism inside Israel. People have looked at what's happening in Gaza and understandably are saying, what's your strategy? We know that he's a, a leader that's only leading in terms of war. There is much criticism, and, and, and if he isn't at war, that many people have been saying to us he wouldn't be in power. I don't want to disrespect what happened at all, but presumably the attacks on Israeli soil didn't take any lives, but on Israeli soil, merely strengthens his position, does it not, in terms of the view of the Israeli people, because he can use that and beat a drum and say, quite understandably, we're being attacked in our homeland. I mean, that's a fact, isn't it? Well, it is a fact. I mean, it is, it is a fact that it was on his watch that Hamas launched its murderous jihadist attack of the 7th of October. That, in a sense, is what started this war. and. He was in charge. It was his job to keep his people safe. And everything he's done actually has not kept his people safe. It has made Israel less secure, not more secure. But his war of mighty vengeance, as he's called it, has not only killed uh, uh, far too many civilians in Gaza, 30,000 plus, we, we believe, and, and maimed a generation of children, but it has not made Israel safer. That's the point. Now, were the Israelis traumatized by what happened on the 7th of October, the largest single massacre of Jews since the Second World War? Of course they were. Does this bind them to their government? Of course it does. Uh, do they stand behind Netanyahu whilst Israel is at war? They will inevitably do so, even if he hasn't brought the hostages over. Indeed, we must fear that most of the hostages are now dead in any case. So the Israelis have lost a huge amount, yet this great fear they have of being wiped out. And both Iran and its surrogate Hamas are 
committed to the destruction of Israel. Uh, what they mean by from the uh, river to the sea is the destruction of Israel. So I think we're in a situation where the Israeli people, they support the war. They don't see the pictures that we see here in the West. They see that the Iranian attack was repelled and that I think they are probably terrified of a second attack. And we shouldn't forget this attack was repelled, but the Iranians now know how we are able to repel. But can yeah. I can I can attacks. I just jump in? The reason that I went down that tack, Anthony, and it's so good to have you on, is that, and I would never demean something, but one got the distinct impression that that attack on the embassy in Damascus that killed 13 people was always going to be met with retribution, which Iran has done. When I say tit for tat and point scoring, presumably Iran needed to show Hamas it was standing shoulder to shoulder, but now they've said, we're done. Israel can say to its people, we're being attacked, and maybe... And, and that's what happens. It's a lot of posturing, isn't it? But as, every, as everybody knows... People will posture and the rest of the world will sit and bite its fingernails. I've been accused of talking about this for months with Tobias Elwood and people like that. Oh, you're warmongering. I think we're in a really dangerous position for this world, aren't we? I couldn't agree with you. And I said for the word go, and people have been kind enough to ask me, we are on the brink of a, a wider war because each tit for tat is worse than the previous tit for tat. And Netanyahu uh, undoubtedly feels that in, in his heart, responsible for what happened on the 7th of October. And people will be whispering in, in his ear and, and there will be a lot of noise coming from the United States of America. Look, you, we have repelled the Iranian attack. Now they are weak. Let's finish the job. Let's go in there and finish the job and get rid of the Ayatollahs for once and for all. And, and that's a powerful message. You know, as the Israeli Prime Minister once said, it, if the Arabs give up their weapons, we have peace in the Middle East. If the Israelis give up their weapons, Israel is destroyed. And that message is very convincing. I think Netanyahu is himself convinced, but it is not the way forward. That is the point. It is not the way forward. Everything that Netanyahu has done to escalate this, whether it's giving guns to settlers who are seizing land from Arabs in the West Bank, whether it is this war of mighty vengeance in Gaza that has not achieved any of its objectives, whether it is the threat to wipe out Rafa, which remains very important. Netanyahu feels his future depends on being the person that uh, carries out a policy of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But as I say, it's more than that. It's, it's two eyes for one eye. It's two teeth for one tooth. And it can only, that can only logically end in catastrophe, catastrophe for the people of Israel, catastrophe for the Arabs. And who knows, we can be pulled into it. The drones that Iran fired at Israel were the same drones that Putin is using to try yep. to destroy Ukraine. And that's all going on at the moment because Putin is rubbing his hands with glee, noticing that uh, the world's attention, quite properly, is more focused now on the Middle East. Where this leads to, if Netanyahu does not draw a line under it, I think is an extremely dark place that will affect us all. Again, as, as Rishi Sunak said last night, this also has repercussions on us here in the United kingdom on our terrorism threat levels, on what Iranians are able to do in the United Kingdom to attack us because we're supporting Israel. Well, thank you yeah, so thanks. much for your insight there. Um, Professor Anthony Gleese, I could listen to him all day. Fascinating. Just totally balanced and, and sense. Thank you, Anthony. Really good to hear from you.